The briefing is now taking place right behind you there in the press briefing room. Let's listen in, guys. In order to and it is not normal. And that also states that in Dr. O'Connor. Uh, but many of the things that I said right here uh, at this podium is in the letter. And can I just also ask a little, this is the second time in less than a week where the briefing had prompted a need for later clarification on questions about the president's health. And I'm just wondering, if you could speak to... So I disagree. What, what, I disagree, Song Ming. It's not. Yesterday, a lot of the things that I said right here in this briefing room, I know you were not in the briefing room, I actually, it's in the letter. It was in the letter. It was being cor incorrectly assumed and insinuated that the president had seen Dr. Uh, Kennard more than three times. I said that it was only three times that the president had seen a neurologist. I didn't confirm the name, but I did say it was only three times. It was being incorrectly assumed and insinuated that the president was being treated for Parkinson's. I said right here that the president was not being treated for Parkinson's. I actually went a step further and said he wasn't taking medication for Parkinson's. I said that right here. It was also being assumed and insinuated that uh, Dr. Kernod was someone who only worked uh, on Parkinson's when, in fact, he's a general neurologist. That was something that Dr. O'Connor was actually able to confirm, that he was uh, a general neuro neurologist, not, not, in fact, a general neurologist. And we also wanted to set the, we just wanted to set the record straight. And so, uh, you know, it is important, we believe it was important to all of you. I actually even said here at the podium, if there was more information that we could provide, we would do that. We would do that. And we did. Uh, but many of the things that I said right here is in the letter. Is in the letter. Does the president feel like he's beat back this effort to force him to step aside? Look, you know, um, you heard the president yesterday when he called into Morning Joe, did about 18 minutes uh, of uh, Q&A yesterday morning. He spoke, very, he spoke very, very, I think, forcefully, passionately about where he stands, about how he sees things moving forward. Uh, and we also have said many times we respect. We respect uh, members of Congress. We respect their view. But I also want to say there's a long, also a long list of um, of congressional members who have been very clear and in support of this president, whether it's the CBC who gave a full th full support, uh, the Congressional Black Caucus for folks who are watching and are not sure what CBC is, uh, they were very much supportive. They said we think that uh, this is uh, Representative Joyce Beatty to, to be clear. We think that the call went extremely well. The president was very responsive. Representative Troy Carter who's also a member of the CBC. Uh, he was elated to hear directly from, from the president and that he is all in, and we are all in with him. You heard from, you got a uh, Congressional Hispanic uh, Caucus. They put out a statement in full support of this president, and there, there are others. And so, look, he is going to focus on continuing to work on behalf of the American people, continuing to build on an unprecedented record uh, that he's been able to get done with many of these congressional members that he's proud to, be, to have worked with. Uh, but uh, that's his focus right now. That's his focus. He's still talking to more people, more, le more. He's going to continue to engage, uh, as you saw him in Pennsylvania when he was on, uh, you know, when he was in the Commonwealth, uh, he, on the road. He's, he had uh, two of the two of the senators, two of the congressional members with him, the House members with him. Uh, he's going to be traveling later in the week. He's going to be engaging. Uh, I've mentioned, I mentioned yesterday his robust schedule for the next two weeks. When he's in state, he certainly will continue. To Engage. I don't have a, a list of additional uh, additional uh, calls to, to read out, but he did CBC last night, Congressional Black Caucus, uh, and he's going to continue and engage as he has been. Get Mary. To follow on that, the president has made clear he's done talking about the debate. It is time to move on. Yeah. But some of his allies have made clear they're very much still in this wait and see mode. I mean, Senator Patty Murray said he must do more to demonstrate he can campaign strong enough to beat Trump. Senator Durbin saying he's concerned whether this is just a one-off or a larger issue. So I guess, you know, how worried is the president that despite his best efforts, he's not going to be able to close the book on these concerns? And Mary, I appreciate the question, but as you know, there are hundreds of members in Congress, hundreds, and I laid out a list of folks who have supported him. Uh, we've heard from Senator Coons. We heard from Senator Fetterman. Uh, there's support there as well for him. Uh, and so we just want to make sure that we put that out there as well. Also party united absolutely, him, right? absolutely. And look, Representative Gregory Meeks said, coming out of the congressional uh, Democrats uh, meeting, said that they're united. 
and you just saw the Dem Caucus leadership uh, take questions from some of your colleagues over uh, at the Capitol. Uh, so that is important as well to note. But look, he had a bad night. We've talked about it. Uh, he understands people's concerns. We have been out there, as we have been in previous months, but out there obviously in the past 10 days, more than 10 days now uh, since, uh, since the debate. And you see from his engagement with everyday people on the ground, uh, you see him with congressional members uh, having, who are showing their support, speaking on behalf of this president while we're on the ground uh, in, in, uh, in that respective state or commonwealth being where we were in Pennsylvania on Sunday. And so we're just going to continue that. But look, what we can say, what I can say is, look, we respect, we respect people's opinion. These are, you just mentioned two senators that we were very proud working with. Uh, over the past three and a half years to get historic uh, historic legislation done. And that's what we want to focus on. You're right, we do want to turn the page. You heard me say this last week. We want to get to the other side of this. We want to continue doing the work. And that's what the president's going to do. And just to be clear, does he have plans to talk with leadership again soon? I don't have any uh, calls. We don't have calls to read out or, or, or to preview. He is going to continue to engage. I just don't have anything right now uh, to share at this moment. He talked to CBC. Uh, uh, again, the Congressional Black Caucus uh, members yesterday, they had a very, very good call. Uh, and so he's going to continue to engage. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Um, the White House has obviously fielded a lot of questions in recent days about the President's health, whether the White House has been forthcoming or not about that issue. And I just wondered, um, have the last 12 days made you reconsider any specific statements that you might have made in recent months on, on that issue? I, look, I appreciate the question. I really do in the opportunity. I think there has been moments here when I have said, and I, especially in the gaggle, I think, uh, and, and actually yesterday, uh, if I if I have, uh, you know, uh, uh, said, misled in something that I've said or haven't had the full information, I actually own up to that. And I actually say, I will do my best to get you the information. Hence the letter. Hence the letter for Dr. O'Connor, right? And so um, uh, I will, you know, I've always said, I've always been committed to doing the best I can to give you the information that we have. That is a commitment from the team. It has been an unprecedented time. I think you guys could admit that, right? It is an unprecedented time. And so we are meeting the moment, a new moment that has never really existed before. And so we want to make sure that we get you all the information that we have. And when we don't have it, we do try our best to provide that information. Uh, and so that is something that I'm going to continue to do. And I've always said it is an honor and a privilege to be standing in front of you every day, exercising in the freedom of the press. This is, uh, this is a briefing that is watched around the world because we lead in democracy, right? We lead in the freedom of the press and what that looks like. Honor and privilege, and I will continue to do my best to do just that. And, and we certainly understand, yeah. you know, you speak on behalf of the president and you defend him, his actions, his positions, his policy positions included. Um, could I just ask you about one example, just going back, uh, that comes to mind? September in the past, we are talking about the last 12 days. I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> you recent, just, well, recent you, months. No, well, you just said recently it's been, you know, we've been going back and forth. And so in the last, you know, 12 days or so, that was that's how I believe that's how you asked yeah, me the question. I, I, I was talking generally. Okay. Um, but if I could just ask you about one example. I mean, look, if you're going to ask me about something from months ago, it probably would be fair for me to... I probably won't be able to answer that right away, whatever it is that you're you're going to you say to me. Come back to us. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to do that. But um, but it's also to to say, hey, from September of whenever year, right? Mm -hmm. That is uh, that is something that I probably should give a little space to kind of see exactly what you're speaking of. Okay, and, right? and that's fine if yeah. that ends up. I, being no, I just want to make sure that we sure. kind of give some context here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll remember this. Uh, this was an event where the president. Yeah. Um, called out Congresswoman Jackie Walorski, yeah. looked for her in the room even though she had recently died. Um, you told multiple reporters at the time, and yeah. this was asked in multiple different she was ways. Top, she was top of mind. Um, right. Yeah. It was because she was top of mind yeah. for the president. I mean, would you, on, on that example, would you offer a different explanation? I would not, because honestly, I spoke to the president right before coming out that day, and that is what the president told me. It's not something that came from me, that is something that came from the president. So, so he was saying even she, as he was looking for her in the moment, it wasn't a she was top. She was top of mind. 
Okay. I, that is coming, as you just said in your question, I speak for the president. I, I speak on behalf of him. That was coming from him, and I was delivering directly from the president what he was thinking at the time. Great. A very different kind of example, and this is more recent. Oh, um, sure. Sure. Uh, when the president was in Italy for the G7, and okay. you remember he skipped one of the leaders' dinner, okay. which was a major event for the summit, and I remember you were asked about it by reporters, and you said, you know, we shouldn't read too much into the fact that he's skipping one dinner. I mean, yeah. what would the explanation actually have been? that he was tired and that he needed to say something that was I, happening so my, late in the And evening. my answer stays the same. I wouldn't read too much into it. It's not the first time that he has. Uh, he has uh, a really busy schedule, and there's a lot going on. As you know, when the president is abroad, he has continued to do domestic stuff as well as, uh, as, well as meeting with global leaders. And so I truly would not read too much into it. Uh, and I will leave it there. Okay, I have a very final question on the, the annual <laughs> okay. um, sure, sure. letter from Dr. O'Connor. Uh, he said that the president continues to be fit for duty and fully executes all of his responsibilities without any exemptions or accommodations. Just because it's been a couple of months, do you know if that statement is still accurate? It's still accurate. So no exemptions, no accommodations? No exemptions, no accommodations. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. I mean, there was an um, announcement from the Department of Justice today about uh, a crackdown effort to interrupt a um, Russian state-sponsored uh, bot uh, operation, AI fuel operation, to um, denigrate politicians in the United States and elsewhere. Um, have, have you, do you have any concerns right now that this is the leading edge of any part of a Russian effort to interfere in the election? Has the president been briefed on this? And have you seen any evidence that the Russians or other foreign powers have tried to seize on the uh, debate performance to repeat some of the president's most embarrassing moments? So that's a very good question. Uh, I would have to talk to our team about those particular questions that you just asked. There were multiple questions uh, in your statement there. Uh, I would leave it to the Department of Justice as uh, what they announced. Obviously, that's for them to speak to. Look, AI has always been a concern. Uh, that's why the president uh, made some announcements recently in executive, uh, to take executive action on how we can deal uh, with AI. We want to see more, uh, more action, more fulsome action legislatively from Congress. Uh, and that is something, it is a, it is a, techno a cutting edge technology uh, that we need to get our hands on uh, and make, get a better, uh, uh, you know, better uh, understanding of what it could potentially do. Uh, and so that is something that the, pr the president certainly uh, is looking uh, is looking to make sure that we deal with this in a full uh, uh, whole of government way. Uh, on those particular questions, I would have to check in uh, with our uh, uh, with our team here, and obviously whatever is related to the Department of Justice in that in that in, in that statement, I would refer you to them. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you said uh, just a minute ago that the president wants to turn the page uh, on, the, on the last couple of weeks and get to the other side of this, where the White House wants to. Uh, you know, has President Biden seen enough? Uh, support uh, over the last 36 hours from fellow or from fellow Democrats in Congress uh, to now start turning the page and look ahead. I mean, what's his reaction been to uh, to what to what he's seen since Congress has gotten back? I mean, it's very similar to how I answered your, the question to one of your colleagues. He's very much focused on what's what's ahead, right? He's very much focused. He has a fulsome. A robust schedule in the next two weeks that we laid out for all of you. He wants to focus on that. The messages that he wants to come out when he goes to Texas next week, when he goes to Vegas uh, next week, he's going to uh, d uh, gonna be on the road on Friday as well. And I also want to say, look, you know, he is proud of of the Congressional Black Caucus, who said they have uh, he he has their support. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus did the same, uh, and other and other members of con of Congress, obviously, and so. Look, he wants to move forward, uh, as your colleague said. Definitely unite the unite uh, unite the party. Continuing to the, unite the party, uh, we heard from Representative Meeks, who said the Democrats, uh, the congressional Democrats, came out of the meeting today uh, united. I think that's important to note. Uh, but the president's going to move forward. He's going to move forward, and he's going to uh, continue to go out there, engage, engage with the American public, like you saw him do in Pennsylvania. And he's going to stay focused on that. What do you feel? Does he feel like he's weathered this storm, so to speak? 
Look, I think that he is more determined than ever uh, to continue to get the, the job done, to continue to uh, build an economy that, that uh, works for all, uh, to continue to make sure that we have a middle class, right, that is, that, that is strong, right, that we don't have a trickle-down economy, that we economy that's built from the bottom up, middle out. That's what he wants to continue to do. I think this week with the NATO summit, the 75th year of NATO, let's not forget, NATO uh, has helped to protect Americans and, for, and also protect uh, the world and what it's been able to do for the past 75 years. You're going to see the president uh, engaging with uh, 32 uh, leaders of this alliance. Uh, I think that's really important. That's, again, on behalf of the American people. So he wants to do that. He has a lot on his mind and as, as it deals with uh, making sure we deliver for the American people. That's what he's going to focus on. Okay, okay, Peter, I know. I know we had our chat yesterday. Yes, yes. thank you, Karine. So Does President Biden commit to serving a full second term if reelected? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we know the president says that his health is fine, mm -hmm. but it's just his brain. And that he's sharpest before He eight. was joking, by the way. I just want to make sure that that's out there. And people, people, pe he was making a lighthearted joke as he was speaking he off. He was spe he's speaking off the cuff and he was making a joke. You know the president; he likes to joke a lot. Okay. He's the same guy who says, "I know I look forty, right?" So he likes That's to make joke. jokes. It is a joke. He, okay. I think people laugh when he says it. Well, so he also said he's, he's sharpest before eight p.m. So say that the Pentagon at some point picks up an incoming nuke. It's eleven p.m. Who do you call? The first lady? He has a team that uh, lets him know of any of any news that is pertinent and important to the American people. Uh, he has someone, or that is decided, obviously, with his National Security Council on who uh, gets to tell him that news. So Kevin McCarthy just said that when he was the speaker, many times when we had meetings in the Oval Office, Jill was there as well. When the first lady is in these meetings, is she making decisions or is she no. just advising the president? No, the president is the president of the United States. He makes decisions. Okay. Another family member. President Biden has told me before he and his son don't have any business dealings together. So what is Hunter Biden doing in White House meetings? Are you talking about the meeting where they came together from Camp David and the two of them walked to the president's meeting and he was there? There's a report that aides were struck by his presence during their discussions. Look, I can't, I'm, I'm certainly not going to get into uh, private conversations that, are, that occur. What I can say is, and I talked to this, I spoke to this before, is that uh, when they came back from Camp David, the president spent a, a couple days at Camp David with his family. Uh, he is very close to your, his family, as you know. It was the week of 4th of July, which is why his family members were here last week. They walked together, and they walked together into uh, the meeting. Can you say if Hunter Biden has access to classified information? No. And are you guys just not, since February, testing President Biden for Parkinson's or for dementia? Because if he gets a bad result, it's all over that day. Again, as I've said many times before, the president has had a fulsome, comprehensive, uh, uh, what we said, what we shared with you was comprehensive, but he's had a full uh, physical. We've, sh we've shown the results of those physicals this past three years. We showed it just four months ago. Uh, and it is in line with what we have done, uh, similar to President Obama, similar to George W. Bush. Uh, we are committed to continue to be transparent. We are committed to continue uh, to show uh, the results of those, uh, of those physicals. And look, it's the president's medical team that makes the decision. We are not, with all due respect, you're not a doctor, I'm not a doctor. It is the president's medical unit that makes a decision on what the president needs. Not a doctor, just no. play one on TV. Uh, but I know that scary. that is scary. <laughs> but I know that, especially as adults get into their 80s, health conditions can pop up more than just once a year when he's getting his physical. I think if my wife saw me on TV misspeaking or saying the wrong thing or yeah. seeing a change in my appearance, she would probably say, let's go to a doctor just to make sure that you are okay, you have a family, you have an important job. 
why doesn't anybody in the president's family urge him just to go to get checked out to say the coast is clear? Okay, so just to step back just a little bit, because I think you weren't in the briefing room last week. I, I, I don't want to go backwards, but just to share a, a little bit about that night. The president said it was a bad night. Uh, he talked about it. He had a, a cold, right? He talked about his schedule, right, uh, being abroad. Uh, and so we have spoke about what that night was like for him. And we understand what the American people saw, what you all saw, we've spoken to that. And I also would say, uh, and I think you know this, Peter, you've, you've covered a couple of administration at this point, administrations at this point, that the president, every president, has a White House medical unit uh, that is with him 24-7, that is available to him 24-7, that is unlike any other American, right? That is not the norm, that is uncommon. Just down on the other side of the colonnade is where the medical unit is. Uh, and I did share in the, that uh, the president checks in while he's exercising with his doctor on a couple times a week. Uh, and so he has that. He has something that most majority of Americans, all Americans I would probably argue, don't have, uh, which is a full medical unit that is with him at all times. Uh, and he gets a full full, full physical, annual physical that we share with all of you. And that is very different, very different than an everyday American who sometimes they're lucky if they can go get a physical. Uh, they have to get into a car. They have to take public transportation. The president has, again, a medical unit that's with him here at the White House and travels with So I guess the question is just, this is not, you're saying this is not a situation where you would rather just not know if there is an what issue I will with tell the president, you is, because if he no. does get a bad result, it is all over. He first has to all, leave office right all, away. He can't run for re-election. First of all, it's a hypothetical, right, that, that you're giving me a hypothetical. But I will also say, just to clear this up, his, the White House medical unit, uh, his, his doctor, they don't believe that he needs anything more than what he, we have been able to provide, a full, full, d detailed, uh, very comprehensive physical uh, that he had four months ago. It is their decision to make. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's the White House, White House Medical Unit. Okay. Hi, Green. You mentioned that the Democratic Party was united, perhaps the leadership, but a lot of rank and file Democrats have a lot of concerns. One of them, Steve <clears throat> Cohen, said today not only are they not on the same page, but they're not even in the same book. How does the White House, is the White House concerned about that? Look, we, I've said before, right, we respect congressional, congressional members. They have their opinions. We respect their opinions, many of them, that we've got, we had to, opportunities to deliver really, really good results on behalf of the American people. But there is. The whole Congressional Black Caucus, they support the president. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus support the president. Those are pretty impressive numbers. Uh, Senator Kuhn, Senator Fetterman support the president. There's also another list here that shows support for this president. You're going to have some congressional members who feel differently. It is, that is, that is up to them, right? The president wants to continue. He's going to have those conversations. He's going to engage with congressional members. He's going to continue to do that uh, as he has. Uh, that's not going to stop. Uh, obviously, the campaign is doing their work. We're doing, uh, continuing our engagement with congressional members as we do uh, pretty much all the time uh, on whatever issue we want to work with them on. So that's not going to change. You heard from uh, AOC, the Congresswoman from New York. She said, the matter is closed and I support him. Right? You heard from Maxwell Frost, who was on CNN uh, today, gave, was very supportive on CNN. So you do have others out there just today, just today or yesterday, giving support to the president. I can't, you know, it, you're mentioning one person, but there are others as well. Well, Kareem, uh, yeah. oh, on a separate topic, sure. Charlie, said at Richmond this morning, he said that the, uh, the debate stage was words, the debate stage was performance. I would say look at actions and accomplishments. Uh, the president's allies have made some version of that argument to not pay attention to what he said on stage, but what his accomplishments uh, are. But when you're, when you're the president of the United States, don't words matter? So when you're the president of the United States, uh, I think any, kind, any leader, right, especially including a former president, your words do matter. You're 100% correct. Uh, the president has owned up to that night. He said it was a bad night. He said this. He said this many times. He's even said he screwed up. 
So those are the president's words. That's all I can give you at this time. We do believe that we should not just look at the 90 minutes the president has had has done more than any other modern day presidents, administrations. Historic, historic things have gotten done. When I was watching the Democratic caucus, they talked about $35 uh, insulin, right? Capping that. When you think about seniors who are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars, we were able to get that done uh, because of a, a very important piece of legislation that we, mo we moved through, right? Uh, and only Democrats made that happen. That's also because of the leadership of this president. And that's just one. That's a bipartisan infrastructure legislation. There's the Chips and Science Act. There's the, uh, the PACT Act for our veterans. I mean, there are things that he's been able to do that elected officials, presidents before him have been trying to do and could not get done, get done beating, uh, beating Big Pharma. So there is a long list of impressive things that this president has been able to get done, getting us out of the pandemic, that we do believe is important to note here as well uh, as an accomplishment of this presidency. Another question that I don't think has been asked, correct me if it has. Yeah. Um, the White House and also the campaign has said that he had a cold that night. He then went to a watch party afterwards, which you mm -hmm. brought up. I was at that watch party. If he did have a cold, why then push him to another event where he spent some 45 minutes along the rope line? I mean, and not just a, and I would add to that, it wasn't just a watch party. We landed at 2 a.m. in the morning in North Carolina. He greeted hundreds of uh, North Carolinians in North Carolina. He woke up the next day in North Carolina, gave uh, a speech uh, in front of uh, in front of thousands of North Carolinians. Was, was no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to lay. You give you gave me an opportunity, and I'm just using that opportunity, obviously, uh, to lay out what the president did in those uh, two and a half days. Look, you know. One of the reasons that we shared that he had a cold is because during the debate in real time, everybody heard his his hoarse voice, and folks asked, and we were able to com we were able to confirm right away that he had a cold, uh, and that um, and that he was also tested negative for for COVID. So we were able to share that in, in real time. So just also want to share that. Look, he pushed forward, right? Many of us have colds. And we still push forward. He's the president of the United States. He understands how important it is uh, to continue to get up every morning, regardless of how you feel, right, to get things done. That's how this president is. I'm sure, I'm sure that's how many presidents before him were as well when it comes to really not letting a cold get you down. Uh, and, and I think that's also why he pushed forward uh, in the debate uh, also um, on, on that night. So. Look, he pushed forward, tried to get things done, wanted to make sure that he had an opportunity. People who watched him do a debate, who were waiting for him, people at 2 o'clock in the morning in North Carolina who were waiting for him, he wanted to make sure that he engaged uh, with Americans. And finally, Kareem, um, this morning House Speaker Mike Johnson said, as he has before, that Democrats have been covering up the president's mental acuity for years. How do you respond to that? And has the White House misled America? And so I will say this. Uh, Americans out there, folks who are watching, who are not normally in the day-to-day -day of what's happening in this world, there is a comprehensive uh, medical, full comprehensive medical report uh, on the website, whitehouse.gov. I would encourage them to take a look, to take a look. Read, read that report. Uh, and they can also read for themselves uh, what his, his uh, you know, specialist, a group of specialists uh, the, of, uh, coming out of the medical unit decided on what they examined, what they saw, what they reported on. I think that matters as well. Uh, it is a group of them that come together when it comes to doing their physical. It is extensive physical. And so there is something there for them. It's transparent. It's out there. It's for them to read. It's for the American, not just for you, for the American people to take a look. Uh, and I think that's important to note as well, and that's what I would share with them. Okay, and I'll come to you, Ed, in a second. Okay. Thanks, Karina. Um, the president said yesterday in his letter, in his interview, that he talked to a wide range of voters. He overwhelmingly heard from people that they wanted him to stay in the race. Our polling shows that 76% of Democrats think he is too old to run this year. How is he coming to this conclusion? Are you sure that a handful of events is giving him a representative view of swing state voters? So look, I mean, look, that has been, you all have asked me about polling and his age for, I feel like, a year now. It's come up 
many, many times. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to speak to polls. It's not something I'm going to do from here. I'm just going to let the experts, the pundits, and all of you. He's saying he's conducting his no, own no, poll. wait. wait I, I, was, I was about to answer your question. Just give me, give me a second. Look, for the past three and a half years, the president has been out there talking to voters. And if you think about and I th what he was referring to when we went to, uh, when he went to Atlanta right after the watch party, he saw, he, he literally did a rope line. Some of your colleagues were there. Some of your colleagues spoke to uh, some of the folks who were there and heard from them directly. He heard from folks at the rope line. I mean, these are everyday, engaging with everyday people. That's what he did. Landed at 2 a.m. In, in the morning in North Carolina, hundreds of people there. He did a rope line, engaged with everyday people. The next day, thousands of folks, thousands of people were at the North Carolina event, and you heard chants, let's go, Joe. We love you, Joe. I mean, that's something that you feel, right? That's something that you feel uh, out there, and that's what he feels out there. The next day, he went to New York, uh, and he was able to spoke to to speak to some supporters there and then went to New Jersey so it is a continuation on Sunday 600 people at the church the whole if you watch that that's that uh, uh, that service you heard you heard from that congregation if you watched him in Harrisburg you saw people you saw him engaging with people I mean that it, there's nothing that takes away all respect to the polling out there but nothing takes away I don't think from engaging with everyday Americans. I think that matters too. And that's just, I'm just laying out the last 10 or 12 days, right? That's just the last 10 or 12 days. One more. Um, over the weekend, the New York Times reported on a senior White House official who apparently had worked with the president in his vice presidency in the 2020 campaign, said he shouldn't seek re-election. They thought he was not up to it and was showing signs of his age. Does, has the White House know who this person is or made any effort to find out? And are you comfortable having someone who apparently is traveling with him and working with him in this way who thinks this? I, I mean, look, that is, uh, that is the first time I've ever heard that was in that reporting. Uh, you know, we, this, is not, uh, this is not the last administration where we try to find who is, you know, speaking or leaking. That's not something that we do here. Uh, everybody has their opinion, but that is the first time I've ever heard anything like that. I've never heard any spe anyone speak in that way from here. Okay. To follow up on something you were saying that gave about congressional outreach, mm -hmm. has the president spoken to, does he plan to speak with any of those that have publicly called for him to go? Look, uh I don't have a list of people. I'll tell you what, this is quite a different tone from yesterday when Corrine uh, Jean-Pierre was addressing reporters at the briefing. As you know, after that disastrous debate performance and all the concern about the president's mental acuity, we find out yesterday that a Parkinson's expert has been visiting the White House eight times in eight months. And that briefing yesterday, I think it's fair to say, was, was pretty crazy. Uh, Corrine, uh, got, got very testy with reporters. Reporters got testy. Uh, and the, at, the bottom line was, where's the transparency? What is the status of the president of the United States and his mental health? What is going on? Who is this specialist? Who is this specialist seeing? Uh, so many questions about the president's capability of leading this country another four years. Since yesterday to today, to today, you can see it's very calm, but the messaging hasn't changed. The White House clearly in damage control.